Whew. The weather may be nice outside, folks, but I have made, but I have my commitment to give you guys the best content on this channel. Hello, my fellow Latter Day Saints. Kenzie Bradshaw, the woman entertaining here, the most inspirational woman in all of Airship. Back once again with another edition of the Trophy Achievement Podcast, your one-stop shop for all the latest gaming news, gaming rumors, and of course those sweet points and trophies. So, uh, yeah, it's been another busy week in the world of gaming, and we have got a lot to get through today, as always. I mean, that's the great thing about doing a podcast every week. There's so much to get through, and I get it done in two videos at most. If I'm able to get it done in one video, that's a bonus, because it means less work for me to do. I'm not saying I'm not saying doing the work is bad. I'm just saying it just lightens my workload. Uh, right, so we've got news on Dark Souls and their cut content. Bioware developer opening up about the reception of Mass Effect Andromeda. Been a while since we've heard from Mass Effect, let me think of it. Uh, Amy Hennig, Amy Hennig, um, a news regarding her. There's been a new Overwatch hero revealed and oh my word, I'm going to have a field day with this. Uh, Sony... And the uh, infamous cross pl cross play issues, um, Google and the fake Fortnite downloads, um, news on David Jones and uh, Crackdown, uh, Destiny Two with their their collections, uh, news on Konami. Who'd have thought I'd be doing news on Konami? Uh, what next? Uh, Ooh boy, a, le uh, a legal bat uh, a legal claim by Bethesda reg regarding the Westworld game by Warner Brothers. Ooh boy, that's gonna be news. Okay. Um, the playground mode on Fortnite. Uh, we're gonna have news regarding that as well. Uh, we've got news on the Halo TV show that's uh, on the way as well, and um. And uh, we're almost at the end of June, which means today we're going to be looking at the Battle of the Free Games. Who's, get, who's got the best games for July 2016? We need to find out about that soon enough. And then in the points and trophies section, we have got not one, but two games to get through today. Because, oh yes. Um, wait, um, hang on, uh, we've got, hang on, looks like we've got some secret trophies here, uh, anyway, uh, I need to go, ah, that's what I need, achievements, boom, oh, ho, 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 ho. 3,000 eight score, that'll be fun. Right, so there we go. Um, oh, I've got a lot of secret. Uh, I have a lot of secret achievements to get through uh, because the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is now out on Xbox One, Nintendo Switch. And PC so yeah I'll be going through the achievements last I mean when it came out on PlayStation last year I went through the trophies for the game I'm pretty sure I did anyway but anyway uh, I'll be going through the secret achievements for the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy and I will be going through the trophies for the crew too. I'm going to be going through the full trophy list here. And, ooh, looks like people have been busy already. But anyway, on with the news. But before that, 
A big shout out, as always, to Boomerang Rentals. Their packages start from as little as £3.99 a month. Sign up today, get a 21 day free trial, and you get three free game rentals. There are no late fees, you can keep the games as long as you like, or keep them forever at a discounted price from the online store. That is nothing. Once you start renting, you're gonna start saving. Boomerangrentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. Let's all laugh at an industry that never learns anything, tee hee hee. And goody goody gumdrops, that jingle means it's the gaming screw up of the week. So here we go, what do we have in store for? What do we have in store for the gaming screw up of the week? It is from software. From software, eh? Who'd have thought they'd have the screw up of the week? Well, well, well. What do we have here? Dark Souls 3 content suggests it could have a PvP Battle Royale mode. I am reading this correctly, right? PvP Battle Royale mode. I'm not just I'm not I'm not seeing things, right? I'm not seeing things. Ah. Kids, would you step outside for a second? <gasps> Dear Lord, that's the loudest profanity I've ever heard. Thanks, Oma. Yeah, that's definitely one of those cases of... Guys, would you step outside for a second? And it's a case of... No! Oh boy, even Dot, even From Software have jumped on the. <sighs> Looks like From Software, even they've jumped on the Battle Royale bandwagon. <sighs> I said it about. Oh dear. I mean, unbelievable. I mean, who'd have thought From Software would be potentially stepping into the Battle Royale mode? So, good grief. Anyway, Soulsborne sleuth Lance McDonald has returned to Lothric, this time with the suggestion, with the suggestion Dark, Th Dark Souls 3 once planned. This time with the suggestion Dark Souls 3 once planned a PvP Battle Royale multiplayer mode. Hmm. In his latest Dark Souls Alpha Cut content video, McDonald visits the third game's High Wall of Lothric area. He discovers three items absent from the final game. The Ceremony Sword of Darkness, the Ceremony Sword of Flame, and the Ceremony Sword Battle Royale Eclipse. In order to explain the latter, it makes sense to look first look at the former. Below, McDonald says the Sword of Darkness description reads, When used to perform a ceremony to envelope the world in darkness, for playable version, select this item to perform an eclipse ceremony. He explains the item can only be used in, spe in a specific context that he's unable to recreate in-game, but is able to work around it by changing a flag in the game's executable. Doing so, report doing so transports McDonald to a new unseen version of the high wall that plunged into darkness. It's referred to in the game's data files as its moonlight ceremony state. McDonald says the ceremony sword of flame this description reads when used invade a world that has been enveloped in darkness. For playable version select this item to perform an invasion ceremony. While he can't say for sure McDonald's suggests both swords would have allowed players to host and invade player-created Moonlight Ceremonies, respectively. McDonald then talks to a third item. The Ceremony Sword Battle Royale Eclipse. It comes with no description, but McDonald says it may have been another way for players to engage in multiplayer events in Moonlight Ceremonies. 
He then explains that the term Battle Royale has been used in the Soul series to describe multiplayer arena modes. He adds, we always assume that Dark Souls 3's Moonlight Battle Royale ceremony was an extension of the PvP arena concept. All of which means Dark Souls 3's cut into interpretation of Battle Royale probably wasn't the PUBG Fortnite flavoured fight to the death setup we're now so familiar with. We can dream though, right? Um, no, because we don't want any more Battle Royale games. Just leave it as PUBG versus Fortnite. Leave it to that. Nothing else needs to be made with Battle Royale mode. <clears throat> Other neat discoveries of McDonald's include the suggestion of Osario's baby. Osario's baby wasn't always invisible, and the idea that Pontiff Sullivan was once the final boss. Hmm. Okay. So Dark Souls 3 were planning on a battle royale mode before PUBG and Fortnite made it popular. Well, how's about that? How's about that? Right. Um, as always, I've got to try. As always, I've got to try and get a uh, news story from IGN because why not? It's IGN. Right. Google reportedly working on gaming streaming service hardware. Okay. Google is looking at hardware, streaming, and game development. Hmm, interesting. Right. Google reportedly may be working on some form of video game hardware. According to several sources close to Kotaku, the web giant is also developing some sort of streaming platform and is interested in gathering game development talent under its banner. Representatives from Google reportedly approached several major developers to gauge interest in the streaming platform, reportedly codenamed Yeti. The Google Yeti. Hmm, okay. At this year's GDC, as well as reportedly during E3 2018. According to Kotaku's report, the streaming service would allow the off would allow would offload the work of rendering graphics to beefy computers elsewhere to allow a wide range of PCs to play more intensive games. Interesting. Um, Kotaku has also reportedly heard one idea suggested about the service would be heavy YouTube integration, such as letting players jump from a PlayStation to a video walkthrough with ease. Hmm. Kotaku has also reportedly heard one idea suggested about the service. I've literally just read that one. Hang on. The report also suggests the possible Google hardware could link up with streaming service in some with the streaming service in some way, but no specifications of the hardware have been revealed by Kotaku's sources. These reports add a bit more context to the tech giant's recent actions, as Google has already hired a number of industry veterans from EA, PlayStation, and more, according to Kotaku, including Phil Harrison, who worked as a manager at both. PlayStation and Xbox. Google isn't the only one looking forward towards the future. Microsoft is looking for a strong resurgence as it recently announced it is working on the next generation of Xbox hardware, reportedly codenamed Scarlet. The Xbox Scarlet, eh? I can get behind that. IGN has reached out to Google for comment. For more on the possible future of streamed gaming, yada yada yada. Well, interesting.
Now, let's see. Bioware Dev opens up about Mass Effect Andromeda reception. Mark Dara takes to Twitter to ask, did Mass Effect Andromeda get a fair shake? It's no secret that Mass Effect Andromeda failed to satisfy the series fan base, but was it that bad? Mark Dara, executed produ executive producer of Anthem and Dragon Age at Bioware, shared some thoughts on Twitter yesterday, suggesting that part of Andromeda's reputation can be attributed to the high quality of games released in the same period last year. Eh, uh, no. The problem is EA were just being typical EA. Wondering whether Andromeda got a fair shake. Wondering whether Andromeda got a fair shake. Dara admitted first that it's a deeply flawed game, especially at launch. You can thank EA for that one. But the review environment was crowded. He added, Neo, Neo Automata, Neo, Horizon Zero Dawn and Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild all launched in Mass Effect Andromeda's window. Yeah, um... Yeah, yeah, Neo, Nier Automata, they were PlayStation exclusives. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was a Nintendo, is a Nintendo exclusive. And you've also got... Horizon Zero Dawn, which was also a PlayStation 4 exclusive. So, yeah. Three PlayStation exclusives and a Nintendo exclusive. What's your excuse? Just admit you made a bad game and stop making excuses. And how often do you hear me criticizing something regarding Mass Effect? As a result, even systems that are pretty decent get scrutinized about superiorly implemented ones. Right, hang on. Each does something better than Mass Effect Drama that, again, a flawed game. As a result, even systems that are pretty decent get scrutinized against superiorly implemented ones. <sighs> Did EA pay him to say this? Still, he admits that while launching into a less busy release period would not turn 72% into 90 Clearly it would have because it would have given you more time to polish the game! But EA didn't let you polish the game. It might well have turned 72 into 77 or 78. While this score difference may, be, may seem insignificant, <laughs> it's nothing. That changes nothing in EA's books. It's enough to affect sales. Um, wrong. Word of mouth affects sales. They say, I mean, you have a gamer like myself being told Mass Effect Andromeda it's a bad game, avoid it. Now, if I haven't played the Mass Effect series up to this point, if I haven't played the Mass Effect series, I'd be like, fine, I'll leave it at that. But I've played the Mass Effect series, and I, and I, and I was going to play Andromeda anyway, because I'm a fan of the Mass Effect series. But EA made a bad game. Not Bioware. I'm not blaming Bioware for this. EA are the only ones responsible for this. And I stand by that to this day. If EA botch Anthem, that's it. Bioware's dead. I've said it before, and I've just said it again. Dara admits that word of mouth matters so much these days. That's exactly what I was just saying. I mean, you tell a casual gamer, don't play Mass Effect Andromeda, it's a buggy mess. They'll listen. You tell a hardcore Mass Effect fan, don't play Mass Effect Andromeda, it's a buggy mess. They'll say, I'll wait till it's pre-owned so I don't have to worry about giving EA my money. Because a good friend of mine is someone who um oh, what was I gonna say?
when a game is pre-owned it's the game store that actually get, it's it's the store that sells the pre-owned copy of the game that gets the money whereas if you buy launch day part of the sales go towards the developers and the publishers and EA being EA they take the lion's share of the they take the lion's share like I say it's typically EA Interestingly, Dara claims that Dragon Age Inquisition benefited by how otherwise quiet 2014 was for new blockbuster games. What it benefited from was the fact it was actually a good game. I've not played Inquisition. I've not played Inquisition yet, folks. But I've got Origins on my Xbox. I plan on playing the rest of the Dragon Age series. Interestingly, Dara claims that Dragon Age Inquisition was... It's true that things might have panned out differently for the game had Witcher 3 not been delayed into 2015. Interestingly, no. And while there's plenty who don't like Andromeda, it's far from a universally reviled game. I enjoyed it! I just haven't played it for a while. I haven't completed it. Al Chris gave the game 80 when he reviewed it early last year. Interesting. I'm convinced EA paid him to say this. Because I guarantee you, if he wasn't with EA, he wouldn't be saying this nonsense. Right. Speaking of EA, Visceral Star Wars game is now pretty different. Gee, I think Amy Hennig has left EA. Good. I don't think she should have gone to EA to begin with. The project previously known as Ragtag is now on the shelf and EA's Vancouver's, EA Vancouver's game sounds like a different deal. Amy Hennig who was the creative director of Visceral Star Wars project before the studio was shuttered last October, left EA in January. She left in January? Wow. I don't blame her. And is moving into indie development. This comes from a Eurogamer interview with the Uncharted co-creator at Game Lab in Barcelona where she also discusses how the project, previously codenamed Ragtag, isn't really the same game in the hands of new developer EA Vancouver. The Vancouver studio is working on something pretty different. They're going to turn it into another FPS. Or, or heaven forbid, Star Wars Battle Royale, good grief. Hennig says, describing Visceral's project as being on the shelf, it's really not. You know, once you go more open world, it's such a different game to the one we were making. Visceral were working on a Star Wars open world game. Good grief. Everybody loved what we were doing, and I'd love to see us resurrect that somehow, but it's complicated. Pfft, not in EA's case. They're going to scrap the entire thing. They more than likely have, as far as I'm concerned. You may remember that EA's Patrick Soderlund said the studio would pivot the design of Ragtag into a broader experience. Pfft, I can't believe that when I see it. Widely interpreted to be an open world style of game, while it was reported by Kotaku that Hennig was in discussions about her future at EA, she confirmed to Eurogamer that she departed earlier this year. I've not worked at EA since January. 
technically legally. Hennig says she's just started an independent studio and hopes to recruit somewhere between six and 15 members of staff. She's also doing consulting work with VR companies. EA's next Star Wars game, meanwhile, will almost be certainly respawn single players Jedi Fallen Order, which was announced at E3 earlier this month, in the worst way possible. No trailer, no concept art, no gameplay. Just title, plot, release date. That was it. And then you wonder why I hate EA. Actually, hate's a strong word. I think too strong at this point. Then you wonder why EA is losing more and more people. Right, so all watch news now, and goody, goody, goody gumdrops, we have a new hero, and this is going to be interesting, yep, yes, yes, yes. Hang on a second. Do, 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 do. So, Overwatch's new hero, drum roll please, Overwatch, Overwatch's new hero is an adorable little hamster. Now I saw a couple of, I saw a couple of posts on social media yesterday regarding this. Hamster. Are there any Top Gear fans watching right now? Hamster being the nickname for <clears throat> Hammond! Oh my word. I wouldn't be too surprised if they actually sent this to Richard Hammond because of his hamster nickname. Oh my word. A cute little hamster is in a a cute little hamster in a rolling mech is coming soon to Overwatch on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. While Battlefield say Battlefield Five, don't care, not interested about Battlefield Five. It's Overwatch I'm more concerned about. The next hero for Overwatch has been revealed, and Blizzard is definitely thinking outside the box on this one. And they've done a very good job, I'll give them that. You see, EA, this is how you do games. You do these things and you make people laugh, like myself. But instead, you're like, hello, I like money. This time around, it's not a human toting some kind of weapon or even an armed robot. No, the character is a hamster that drives a hamster ball mech suit. 
<laughs> oh my goodness me! <laughs> Oh, I've I've got to. I've, uh, hang on. <laughs> oh my word! <laughs> oh my word! I mean, I'm. I'm... <laughs> oh my word! I'm, I'm sorry. I can't stop. <laughs> I can't stop laughing. This is brilliant. <laughs> Right, so fit image in a new tab. Right, come on. Let's see it. Here we go. So anyway, here we go. Right, uh, so let's have a look at this. So let's have a look at this first one. I mean, I mean, I mean, just look how cute he looks. He's so cute. <laughs> oh my gosh. And then, I mean, you just think, oh, he's so cute. I want, I want him as a pet. Until you realize, look at what he's in. He's in a Oh my goodness me! <laughs> it's a hamster ball that looks like a tank! <laughs> oh my goodness me! <laughs> how on earth? How do you comprehend something like that? <laughs> oh. I mean, how? How? How does one comprehend something like this? Why does a hamster have to be so menacing now? <laughs> oh. Alright, okay, here we go. Uh, anyway. Focus. The next o hero for Overwatch has been revealed, and Blizzard... The hero called Wrecking Ball... Ooh, okay. What on earth is he gonna sound like? I said, I said, I've just thought. I said, I've just thought. What on earth are they gonna? What on earth is he gonna sound like? Well, she. I don't know. The hero called Wrecking Ball appeared to be another armed robot like Bastion or Orissa. Rolling onto the scene and shooting its turrets in a fearsome manner. But then, it happened. The top hatch popped open and the giggling hamster called Hammond. No! No, 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 no. Nah, they've not just done that. They've not. Nah, 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 have they, <laughs> nah, have they, have they actually, nah, if, nah, 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 there's no way, there's no way, <laughs> nah, there's, nah, 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 um, nah, there's, there's no way, there's no way, there's no way, I'm like, hang, hang on, have they actually, have they actually gone this far? I- Oh my- no, nah, there's no way. Have they actually- Nah. Um, nah, there's no way. There's- there's no way. Have they actually- Um... Um... Nah, there's just- there's, there's no way. There's no way. No way have they- They- they've- They've not, have they? No, there's, there's there's no way they've done this. There's no way. I'm 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 str I'm I'm struggling. I'm struggling to believe this. I'm I'm I'm, str I'm struggling to believe this. I'm actually struggling to believe this. Right, anyway, here we go. <laughs> Hero 28 is rolling into the lineup in today's developer update. I'm Jeff from the Overwatch team. I'm very excited to introduce to you Wrecking Ball. Now you might be wondering who Wrecking Ball is, so we should talk about the little guy's background a little bit. So on the Horizon Lunar Colony, we already know that experimentation was happening with animals, which led to our favorite talking gorilla, Winston being not only highly intelligent, but able to communicate with us human oh, beings. Okay. Well, on the side, they were doing experimentation with other animals as well. And 
Hammond, who is a hamster, ended up growing not only- No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Did he, hang on, did he actually say that? And Hammond, who is a hamster, they- <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they've done it. They've only got it done. They've only got. They've only got it done. They've only got it. No, I'm done. I'm done. I'm absolutely done. <laughs> they actually made the hamster. <laughs> they actually named the hamster. <laughs> they actually named the hamster Hammond. <laughs> They actually named him Hammond. <laughs> oh my word! I mean, as soon as I saw this article, I as soon as I heard as soon as I heard about this, I, I just thought I've got to do, I've got to report on this. <laughs> done it. They've only gone and called the hamster Hammond. <laughs> oh my word, how on earth? I mean, how? I mean, Overwatch is com- oh, wait, look. Blizzard, take my money. I'm getting a copy of Overwatch. I want to play as Hammond now. <laughs> oh my word, I'm... As far as I'm concerned, Overwatch is complete! Overwatch is complete! <laughs> oh my word! <laughs> oh my word, I was like, I'm, I'm done! I'm absolutely done! <laughs> oh my word! Okay, oh my word! <laughs> oh! I said I'd have a field day with this. <laughs> Alright. Right, anyway. Whereabouts are we? Hero named Wrecking Ball. Then it happened. The top hatch popped open and the giggling hamster named Hammond revealed himself. It's quite the surprise as Blizzard cut a jetpack cat hero because it went too far. Right, yeah, right, let's see. Right, let's see. Well, thank you, right. Well, here we go. Have you ever thought about making it? Well, this was from an interview with the Overwatch director about the abandoned cat hero, Patchy. Have you ever thought about making a cat hero? Surely the internet would love it, would love that. The answer is yes. This is an exclusive. No one has ever heard this before. Oh, some juicy, this is juicy. But when we first started to make Overwatch, we had to test the boundaries. It was a new IP and we didn't know how far or wide we could go. So Winston was kind of this cornerstone in a lot of ways. It was like, hey, there's a gorilla and he talks. Is that okay? Yep. That's okay. Then on the other end of the spectrum, you've got guys like Soldier76. It's her. I've got you in my sights. Who is a soldier guy, and they were good bookends. But we explored much further out from that. We had done a lot of concepting. We had one hero who was just a hockey player, literally a hockey player. Probably talking nice hockey, NHL. We later made a Lucio skin for a hockey player, but we, but he was just a hockey player hero. 
Then there was this one hero that was a huge internal debate on the team because we just loved it so much, but it didn't make it. It was this jetpack and it had this cat that laid in it. Like like a cat does. Then every once in a while it it would paw at the controls. It was a cat in a jetpack. That was one of those moments that helped define Overwatch. We just went, yeah, that's probably too far. But yes, we had a cat hero. Hmm. Right. Well, they've got their reasons. Fair play to them. But in all seriousness now, Hammond, Hammond makes up for this. The new hero's name is Wrecking Ball. Well, that's the official name for it, but the hamster's called Hammond. <laughs> and his main weapon is his automatic quad cannons. In addition to that, he can curl up into a ball and roll around the map to achieve his maximum speed. I definitely want this game. I want to try Hammond. He can utilize a gripping grappling claw to swing around the area, allowing him to damage and knock back enemies. Ooh, this is good. Wrecking Ball's other abilities have... How him to... How him... Somebody needs to proofread these. Wrecking Ball's other abilities have him... Allow him to deploy a massive field of proximity mines and create a temporary pers and create temporary personal shields that increase when more enemies are in his vicinity. Lastly, his ultimate is called Pile Driver, and it slams Wrecking Ball into the ground, damaging and launching enemies upwards. So, a case. It's a case, sir. I wonder if Hammond is British. I wonder if Hammond is British. I could see PC modders modding Hammond to the point where Hammond sounds like Richard Hammond. I could see that happening. I could definitely see that happening. Knowing how crazy the PC modding community is, it wouldn't surprise me. We also know a bit about his origin. Hammond is from the Horizon Lunar Colony, the same place as Talking Gorilla Winston, but he escaped with the Rolling Robot Ball and made his way to Junkertown, the home of Junkrat. Ooh. Okay. Okay, you can get behind there. Sony is confident it will find a solution to its Fortnite console crossplay problem, assuming they can be bothered. It works fine with PC and iOS, though. Mm -hmm. With the arrival of the massively popular Fortnite Battle Royale on Nintendo Switch just weeks ago, many players were shocked to discover that any Epic Games account previously linked to a PSN account was blocked from accessing the game on the hybrid console, despite the fact that PS4 allows crossplay with PC and iOS players. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, the problem lies with Sony, which has already refused to allow crossplay between PS4 and Xbox One players for reasons it won't go into. <laughs> and I reported on this last week, and clearly they haven't learned a thing. I mean, it's only been a week, but still my point still stands. As a huge part of Fortnite's appeal lies in the ability to for players to compete and collaborate across many different platforms. The fact that Sony is holding back total cross-platform play is a huge disappointment not just for fans of the game, but any title that would benefit from unrestricted play between platforms. Let's see, uh, your first-person shooters, Formula 1, in my case, yes, I'm a Formula 1 fan! Battlefield, as much as I hate to say at this point. Basically, any, any multi-platform game that has multiplayer in it. Um, Minecraft... Tom Clancy, heaven forbid, Call of Duty, FIFA, Pro Evolution Soccer, um, and Fortnite, Rocket League, Rocket League would be a great, Rocket League would be great, PS4 does cross-platform play with PC and 
with, with, with PC. Xbox does it with Nintendo. Where's your problem there, Sony? But thank thankfully, Sony has hinted that a solution to the problem could be on the cards. It either is or it isn't. With one executive's comments at the Game Lab conference in Spain, offering a ray of light for fans left in the dark, as reported by Eurogamer. We're hearing, we're hearing it. <laughs> no, you're not. We're looking at a lot of possibilities. You're looking at possibilities that will make you more money. You can imagine that the circumstances around that affect a lot more than just one game. I'm confident we'll get to a solution which we, which we we will be understood, which will be understood and accepted by our gaming community, while at the same time supporting our business. While it's encouraging to hear that Sony is actively looking for solutions to its crossplay problem, there's no guarantee it will loosen its mullish stance. Of course they won't. That said, the outlook is brighter now than it was ever before, so fingers crossed that Sony will find a way to play nice within its console competition. Yeah, if the Minecraft trailer I saw last week was anything to go by... Mm hmm. Anyway, <clears throat> I reported on this last week. Google can't do much about fake Fortnite downloads for Android. Fake Android, fake Android apps are masquerading as Epic Games Fortnite. The downloads only exist to make developers money. Epic Games Battle Royale game Fortnite has been a runaway hit, swelling to more than 125 million monthly. Wait, what? 125 million monthly active users in less than a year. Wee. The game's success is now, rather inevitably, attracting scammers who are out to make money. Hello! I like money! <laughs> the current method is deception. The current method of deception is the impending release of Fortnite's Android app and the lure of playing it before it's officially out. Despite Fortnite being released in September 2017, Google's mobile operating system, which now has more than 2 billion devices, is pretty much the last major platform to get the game. Epic has confirmed its official app will be released in the summer of 2018, so basically any day now. But in the meantime, unofficial malware-laden versions are spreading across the internet, and there's not much Google can do to stop people from installing them on Android devices. There are several videos on YouTube with things claiming to be versions of Fortnite for Android. Nathan Collier, a mobile researcher at security firm Malwarebytes, says in a blog post analyzing knockoffs of Epic's creation. The YouTube links followed by Collier, found by searching how to install Fortnite on Android, points to apps that aren't on the official Google Play Store, but are hosted externally as application package kit files, which can be installed on Android devices. It's a simple program that comes in two different package names, Collier says. The app, the app's icon is an image, Epic Games logo is used and the loading screen is the same as Fortnite's iOS app. At a first glance, it could be genuine. Once the app is opened, it then prompts those who have downloaded it that updates are needed. Trying to install these updates requires a person to verify they're human by installing another app, this time from the legitimate Google Play Store. Users are directed there via a website that makes its developers money by getting people to download Android apps. There never is a version of Fortnite to download. Lucas Stefanko, a malware researcher at ESET spotted the APK download being pushed through YouTube's videos earlier in June. On Twitter, he said the videos have had millions of views and mostly generate revenue for developers. One such app had 40 lines of code for Fortnite video footage and no gameplay, Stefanko says. The apps don't need any technical sophistication to be successful. Google's anti-malware systems can scan devices for malicious files, but fake apps can often spread through the popularity of their subjects. Fake apps spread by social engineering, such as enticing users with the possibility of playing a popular game, says Vapehav Rastogi. 
Apologies if I botched the uh, pronunciation of that name. A computer science research associate at the University of Wisconsin Madison. The vulnerability exploited here is not in the computer system, but in the human. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some people are just. Some people just don't have any patience. Yannick Fratantonio. Yannick Fratantonio. Fratantonio. How do you. Yannick Fratantonio. I can't pronounce this. Yannick Fratantonio, an assistant professor at French Research. Center Yuricom says the Fortnite apps and other similar attempts must be working. These guys are not looking for popularity. They are looking for direct or indirect monetary reward, he says. That would just move, they would just move on if these endeavors were not profitable. There, was a, there isn't a huge amount that Google can do to stop social engineering, especially when it happens outside the Play Store with APK files or from other Android app markets. There are plenty of alternative places to download Android apps from, but Google's own service is considered to be the most secure. In Google's defense, these kind of fake apps are particularly tough to catch, says Corey. The apps are very basic and usually contain a couple of realistic looking splash screens, along with a simple redirect to a website, he adds. However, on further analysis of what's being claimed by the website and fake app, there is obviously malicious intent. This is hard to see without human intervention. Hmm. Well, here's my tip, folks. Don't search for these videos. Just wait till it comes out officially. Right. <clears throat> Crack down creator David Jones on what his departure means for the franchise. Crackdown series creator David Jones has shed some light on what it needs for the long-delayed third entry to the franchise following Epic Games' acquisition of Cloud Gene. Speculation abound following the news that Cloud Gene, which provided cornerstone technology for the game's ambitious multiplayer destruction mode, has be had been sold and Jones would be leaving the Crackdown series along with it. Rumours only, rumors only worsened when Microsoft Studios head Matt Booty refused to confirm or deny the continued role of Cloud Gene's tech in Crackdown 3. You know, I'm not going to get into the actual technical breakdown, he told Polygon. During E during E3 this during Pol he told Polygon during E3 this year. Let's just say that we've got access to a great infrastructure and the game's got like, some great tech in it. And we're going to put we're going to put those two together in the way that makes sense, that makes the most sense. However, speaking to GameIndustry.biz at Game Lab Barcelona this week, Jones said the split means not a lot, basically. Really? The split doesn't mean a lot? Hmm. Jones said, Jones says that Cloud Gene was there at the start to help build the cloud technology required to run the destruction physics but now it's just the technolo technology stack, it's pretty straightforward. The status of Regent Games, founded by Jones and previously working on Crackdown 3, has also been gristle for the rumor wheel. Regent went silent in January 2017, seemingly shuttered. Silence around a studio closure is not uncommon in the industry, with those responsible often stonewalling the issue in order to control the narrative. However, Jones claims that, that Claims that not the case with regions. I suppose it's because there just wasn't much to talk about. I don't think there's anything secretive there. He said, Regent was a very small number of people that came together to help crack down, especially in the early days. According to Jones, Regent operated as a consultant company that was there initially just to help get the project off the ground. He added that Sumo Digital has also been the main developer, that his role and the role of Regent was to facilitate Sumo. Cloud Gene was really there to help with technology and I was there really because I had been there for so long. So I was helping to find a direction for Crackdown 3. 
Speaking of his direction to step away from Crackdown before the game went gold, Jones said it was tough, but this but was the, just the right thing to do at the right time. In an ideal world, it could have been finished faster, and I would have been able to see it through to the end, he said. But to be honest, I look back at other gaming franchises I've worked on, and they've really done and they've done really well without me being there as well. As long as the DNA is there and the right foundations are there. Interesting. Well, that's interesting. It sounds like David Jones is very confident about this project. And if that is the case, then it could, then it's definitely more than likely going to be a pretty good hit. Destiny, do, Destiny 2 details how collections will work for gear and shaders. Interesting. That's interesting. Let's see. Yeah, let's see how that is going to work out. <clears throat> right. For C. Forsaken, the upcoming Destiny 2 expansion, brings a slew of new changes to the game, with ran from random roles to new activities. And one of the new changes is the introduction of the collection system. Today in today in the This Week at Bungie blogspot, Bungie gave fans a look into how the new collection system works when Forsaken launches the Destiny 2 this September. The collection system is a new way for Destiny 2 players to keep track of all the items they have amassed throughout their time playing the game. Bungie first mentioned the addition of this feature during their Forsaken reveal stream. But the This Week at Bungie blogspot gave a lot more insight into what fans can expect with this new feature. According to Bungie, the collections will feature according to the bunch of the collections will feature any non-consumable item players had in their inventory since the launch of Warmind on May the 8th. Shaders are not considered consumables for the purposes of tracking this, so they are safe to dismantle or use. Fans can also safely dismantle ships, ghost shells, and sparrows, and they will all show up in the collection when players take to the Tangled Shore to hunt down Aldren and the Barons. Bungie is still currently looking at the cost of pu for purchasing items through the collection menu, but players should expect the price to be more than just a little glimmer. And for items that are unlocked via Eververse, it will actually cost Bright Dust to repurchase them from the collection slot tab. So for example, if a player likes one of the new Warmind shaders that they will need, they will need Bright Dust, not Glimmer. However, once those shaders are claimed, players will not need to spend Glimmer to apply them. One key set of items will be missing from the collection, however. All Year 2 randomly rolled legendary armor and weapons will not be available through the collections at launch. According to Bungie, they may not have been able to find a clean way to make the items we obtainable at this time. But they are actively working to find a solution that will best fit the na random nature of these items. Forsaken is the biggest expansion Bungie has made in the Destiny universe, so there is bound to be a lot of gear added with it. It's unfortunate that random rolled gear will not be part of the collection at launch, but hopefully Bungie can find a fix for this quickly. Ah. 
We will just need to wait and see what happens. We will just need to wait and see. Konami announces new executives, new gaming, and a new gaming division to focus on games. Hmm. Let's see. Japanese gaming giant Konami has put on an official put out an official statement on their website stating the introduction of their new production division three. They further announced new appointments of exit for executive positions. I'm not even going to bother reading those. According to the post on Konami's website, the newly the newly formed division called Production Division Three is intended to respond to the rapid market changes that surround us and to achieve further growth of our digital entertainment business by making another battle royale game. Shock and surprise. They're more than likely going to do that. The wording makes it clear that this new team is going to be responsible for games, whether it is traditional console and PC ones or mobile. Koji Kobayashi will become the division manager, climbing up the company ladder from his former general manager position in product division one, a uh, production division one. Other new position changes include Tatsuhiko Yamamoto as the general manager of the new division and Kenji Nakamura filling the now vacant general manager position in division one. In the other announcement Konami made today, they introduced the establishment of a new Chief Creative Officer CCO position to strengthen the quality of product and service for each sub-segment to achieve further growth of our digital entertainment business. Sadaki Kan Kanayoshi is the newly appointed CCO with the task of overseeing mobile games, computer and video games. While Shoji Dua is the other new CCO in charge of cards supervision for the Yu-Gi-Oh game, for the Yu-Gi-Oh game. It remains to be seen what the opening of a new division will bring for the future, but it is safe to say that it will, that it, but it is safe to see that whatever it might be, it actually reads that that's it, whatever it might be. Somebody needs to proofread these. But it's safe to say that whatever it might be, it is going to take a while for its fruits to bear. Konami has been getting a lot of vitriol, vitriol from the gaming community ever since their fallout with legendary game designer Hideo Kojima towards the release of Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, which ended in Kojima's departure after acting for decades as a creative figure in the company and the emission of Mission 51. Konami shifted its focus to from traditional games to their highly successful, highly financially successful pachinko business with notable franchises getting new pachinko games, all while disregarding the wishes for normal games from their fan bases. Yeah. Could the newly established production Division 3 be aimed at producing games the core audience wants, or will it end up just being another cog in the mobile and pachinko machinery? It's not possible to tell yet, but it is definitely intriguing to see Konami expand their gaming divisions whichever way it might go. Hmm. Interesting. Right. Worst World game hit by Bethesda legal claim. Ooh. This is going to be interesting. Game publisher Bethesda is suing Warner Brothers over a game based around the HBO series Westworld. Bethesda alleges the Westworld game released last week is a blatant ripoff of its Fallout Shelter title. Oh, so that's what... That's why they filed a lawsuit. 
Included in the Leo Challenge is Canadian developer Behaviour Interactive, which helped Bethesda develop Fallout Shelter in 2014. Warner and Behaviour Interactive have not yet responded to a request for comment from the BBC. Bugs claim. The Westworld game gives players the job of managing the titular theme park and its robotic inhabitants. The facility managed by the player can be expanded underground and includes many of the locations seen in the TV series. Many reviews of the game mentioned its similar similarity to Bethesda's Fallout Shelter, which gives players the job of managing and expanding an underground facility. In legal papers sh widely shared online, Bethesda alleges this similarity is more than skin deep and, used, and the game uses code behavior wrote when creating Fallout Shelter. So basically Bethesda claiming a copy and paste job. Gee, I wonder who does that I wonder who does a copy and paste so well. Activision! In some cases, it says bugs seen in early drafts of Fallout Shelter code also crop up in the Westworld game. Ooh. Bethesda claims the Westworld game infringes its copyright and behavior has misappropriated trade secrets, broken contractual agreements limiting what it can do with the Fallout code, indulged in unfair competition. In a statement given to Variety, Bethesda said it would vigorously protect its legal rights in the valuable intellectual properties it owns and take legal action whenever those rights are being infringed. And it is... Oh, hello? It is seeking substantial damages at... Substantial damages and a jury trial. Well, well, well. Safe to say, things just go interesting. Epic has no idea when Fortnite's playground mode will return. Hmm, interesting. That's it. Introduced as part of Wednesday's 4th version 4.5 update to Fortnite, playground is a limited time mode where up to four players are able to drop into a map together, experiment with weapons and building, shoot each other with minimal consequence, and basically just learn to play the game better without fear of losing. The mode's introduction made sense, considering the influx of new players after the game's Switch version had launched. But apparently the servers couldn't quite handle all the interest in training mode access. Within a couple of hours of going live, Playground was taken offline with Epic citing server strain as the issue. The latest update on this mode is that Epic, who had hoped to have Playground back live by the end of Thursday, has admitted it is currently unable to solve the problems with the mode and does not have a time frame for bringing it back online. This is what the tweet said. We need to continue testing our matchmaking improvements before opening the Playground LTM. Limited time mode. We know you're eager to get out there, but due to this, we'll be unable to release this game mode tonight. More details available tomorrow. Yes. And then Jason underscore cast 10. Why? For those curious on the exact, ob exact obstacles that we've encountered, we'll be releasing a detailed post-mortem after we've smoothed these issues out and reopened the Playground LTM all to all of you. And then you've got OZEZO. OZEZO, oh, I don't know. Um, we uh, expected ETA. We wish we could give you an ETA, but all we can say at the moment is our continued goal is to release this as soon as we're able. We'll provide more updates tomorrow morning as more information becomes available. I 
Okay, Epic hopes to have an update this weekend, but for now, one of the most hotly anticipated modes for Fortnite is just out of our reach. Hmm. Okay. Well, ah, uh, hey-ho. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Now, Halo TV showed to be the most ambitious series ever. Don't they say that about most things? Right. It looks like the much talked about but never seen Halo TV show is really happening as US company Showtime ordered 10 episodes. A lot of things have changed since Microsoft first unveiled the Xbox One in 2013. Most things, in fact, but in particular the company's short-lived obsession with TV, which saw a live, which saw a number of projects announced and then never mentioned again. Hmm. One of these was a big budget Halo TV show to be produced by Steven Spielberg, but now it looks like it's actually happening, just without Spielberg. Spielberg's company Am Amblin Television is still involved, though. So technically, Spielberg is still involved. Technically, as far as I'm concerned, with Kyle Killen of NBC show Awake acting as executive producer, writer, and showrunner. Rupert Wyatt, director of Rise of the Planet of the Apes, will also be an executive producer and direct multiple episodes. Before you ask though, Neil Blomkamp and Guillermo del Toro aren't involved. Okay. But then they... But then it was the once rumored movie they were attached to. But then again, it was the once. I was like, but then they. Seriously, somebody proofread these! But then they, it was. But then it was once rumored. But then. I don't know how to word it because it. Uh, it doesn't make sense! But then again, it was the once rumored movie. They were attached to and not the TV show. The official blurb describes the show as an epic 26th century conflict between humanity and the alien threat known and, and an alien threat known as the Covenant. Halo will weave deeply drawn personal stories with action, adventure, and a richly imagined vision of the future, which is vague enough that it doesn't seem to relate to any specific entry or time period in the series. Halo is our most ambitious series ever, and we expect audiences who have been anticipating it for years to, to be thoroughly rewarded. Showtime boss David Nevins told Entertainment Weekly, Kyle Kellen's scripts are thrilling, expansive, and provocative. Rupert Wyatt is a wonderful world-building director, and their vision of Halo will enthrall fans of the game while also drawing the uninitiated into a world of complex characters that populate this unique universe. If you're wondering why this is suddenly happening now, it's almost certainly a result of Microsoft's announcement of a new Halo game at E3 earlier this month. Not in the sense that the show necessarily has anything to do with Halo Infinite specifically, but that it shows Microsoft are preparing to push the franchise back into the limelight after years of, years of dormancy following the poor fan reception to Halo 5. Hmm. Well, well, that's one series I'm definitely going to be checking out. I'm definitely going to be checking out the Halo series when it comes out. And now, it's that most wonderful time of the month. It's the end of this month, which means we're close to next month. So, it's Xbox vs. PlayStation in the Battle of the Free Games for July 2018. <laughs> Goody. So, as it stands, it is 5 1. It is 5 1 to Microsoft, and once again, they have the advantage of going first. So, here we go. What do we have? 
Right. Let's see. Uh, the Xbox One games I'm not entirely familiar with. With, um, let's see, the Xbox One games I'm not familiar with. Uh, Assault Android Cactus. Okay, released in 2015. Okay. And Death Square. That one sounds intriguing. And just released last year. Oh, it was on the Nintendo Switch. Um, it's a puzzle. Okay, so Death Squall, Death Squared is a puzzle, a puzzle game, and a twin stick shooter. And the twin stick shooter being Assault Android Cactus. Okay, okay. Right. Okay. And then the Xbox 360 games that are going to be backwards compatible on Xbox One. Um. Virtual Fighter 5 Final Showdown and Splinter Cell Conviction. Hmm, interesting. So, two games I've not heard of and two franchises I know about. Okie dokie, right, let's see what we have. PlayStation 4's free PS Plus games for July 2018. Let's see what we have. From the heels of Detroit Become Humans release. Great game, by the way, folks. Ah, Heavy Rain. Heavy Rain is going to be one of the games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Heavy Rain, folks. Be prepared for a lot of Jason! <laughs> and Absolver as well. Uh... Third person action fighting game. Ooh, okay. If you didn't know that. PlayStation 3. We've got Rayman 3 HD. Oh, this one could. This, uh, and you've got Deception 4, the Nightmare, the Nightmare Princess. If you have a save file from Deception 4 Blood Ties, you'll be able to carry over certain unlocks to Nightmare Princess. Ooh, interesting. Very interesting. Okay. I can handle that. I can definitely handle that. Okay, fair play. Fair play. And then on the Vita, you've got Space Overlord and Zero Escape Zero Time Dilemma. Well, it's been a while since I've said this, but the winner of the Battle of the Free Games for July 2018 is Sony. Sony win July 2018, which means for August 2018, they are going to have the advantage of going first. And as a little treat, it's going to be um, it's going to be their turn to go first. In my in one of my favorites, uh, in uh, let's see how many right. So let's see the trophies. Yeah, so we've got thirty-five trophies, which equate to one thousand one hundred and forty points. This is on PlayStation, by the way, folks. That's not the uh, achievement score, but anyway, that's thirty-five trophies. Sixteen are bronze. Fifteen. I mean, I mean. I've got, I mean, I've got two games to cover here. So, I've got two games to cover in this section. So here we go. Right, we've got 16 bronze trophies, 15 silver trophies, and three gold trophies. Get all of those, and you get the elusive platinum trophy. That's 35 trophies altogether. And you've also got a game that's got 77 achievements with a total of 3,000 points. That's, I mean, wow. And that means only one thing, ladies and gentlemen. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting. Yep. The first one is the crew two. So since since Sony won since Sony won their 
July's Battle of the Free Games, they get to go first in the points and trophies. So, here we go. Leap of Faith, No Straw. The, uh, see, I'm, gonna, I'm going from Bronze to Gold and Platinum. Okay. Leap of Faith, No Straw. Uh, starting off with the Bronze Trophies. Leap of Faith, No Straw. Do a 100 meter jump on a bike. Hmm. And the, and the trophy picture, it's the Assassin's Creed logo. Social Butterfly. Completes an event while in a crew. Easy Rider. Earn 500 followers in one freestyle sequence in free drive. Reality check, you've spent 24 whole hours in our virtual world. We thought you should know. <laughs> Press conference, earn enough followers to reach famous level. Acts like a game designer. We do the same event at least three times in a row. I must break you. Beat a friend's highlight, best score of a friend. The end is nigh, the end is nigh, the end is nigh. Time to put away, the end is nigh. Ah. Go to the far edge of the world. Act like an art director. Take a picture outside of any photo quest just for fun, because it looks good. Paint don't hurt. Change the color of one vehicle in your home. BFF. Drive 50 kilometers in a row in a crew. Act like a narrative designer. Unlock all the pieces and watch a full narrative reward. Ghostbust in two. Beat a rival or a friend's ghost. First autograph. Earn enough followers to reach popular level. Ride the jewels. Drive more than two kilometers in a row with the most expensive car. The main game. And the last bronze trophy. Welcome to Motor Nation. This time we'll be generous. You can you have completed the first episode of the live extreme series. Right, next up you've got the silver trophies. Here we go. Coast to coast. Complete the New York hypercar event. Pigs or it didn't happen. Complete 40 Complete 40 photo ops. Epic win. Upgrade your vehicle with epic parts only. Ooh, that'll be fun. Creative thinker. Beat Sophia, the, the freestyle queen, in a rival event. Master of Master of the Line. Cleat, beat Clarence Bishop the Third, the pro racing heir, in a rival event. Ruler of the Streets. Beat Tio Marquez, the street racing king, in a rival event. Double down. Beat Tucker Morgan, the off-road champ, in the rival event. Rising Star. Earn enough followers to reach star level. Virtuoso. Complete each skill type in each family main game. The Collector. Own 30 different vehicles. Jack of all trades. Complete one event in each discipline. Hard way to hell. Hard way to hell. Complete an event on hard difficulty. Mm, that was easy enough. Drift like a tester. Score 100,000 points or more in any drift event. Max out Fury Load. <laughs> Reach max level for one of your vehicles. Main game. Binge watching. Complete the full season of the Live Extreme series. And now we've got three gold trophies. Are you a god? Say yes. Earn enough followers to reach Icon 50 level. That's a wrap. Complete the grand finale. And, uh, and the man, the myth, the legend. Earn enough followers to reach icon level. And then you get that, you get all those, you get you're the you're the driver, baby. Basically win all the other trophies to get the elusive platinum trophy. Ha ha ha. And now, on to part two, where we've got 77 achievements worth 3,000 points. Which means... Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting! Points and trophies, trophy achievement hunting! <laughs> yep. Right. So, let's go through the, let's go through these okay right so we're going through the secret achievements the secret achievements in crash bandicoot one for the crash bandicoot insane trilogy because it came out on xbox one just today feed me 
Feed me, Seymour! Just die. 20 gamer score. The box that broke the bandicoot's back. 20 gamer score. Miss a lot of boxes. Ooh, that's gonna be painful. Cortex is crazed contest. 35 gamer score. Earn the key in Sunset Vista. Cortex is terrifying trial. 35 gamer score. Earn the key in Jaws of Darkness. I see London, I see France. 35 gamer score, die as crash. That works! The Crown Jewel, 35 gamer score. Seek and destroy. And. And an ancient antiquity. 70 gamer score. Right. Crash Bandicoot 2, Secret Achievements. Our Helping Paw, 20 gamer score. Don't feel guilty about jumping on him. Buzz off, 20 gamer score. Die as Crash. 20, uh, <laughs> just forget, I mean, Cortex Enfuriated, 20 gamer score. Just forget it already, repeatedly. The Crash Cubed, Crash Cubed, 35 gamer score. Fly, then die. Hang in there, maybe. 35 gamer score, discover the secret exit in Hanging Out. Island Hopping, 35 gamer score. Discover the secret exit in Bear Down. Jumping the Jet Bolt, 35 gamer score. Discover the secret exit in Air Crash. No bear left behind. 35 gamer score, discover the secret exit in Unbearable. The Flora Flop, 35 gamer score, discover the secret exit in Digging It. And the secret achievements in Crash Bandicoot 3. Accept no substitutes. Shoot the imposter, 20 gamer score. Riddle of the Sphinx, 20 gamer score. Have your bazookas ready. Trigger clicking good. 20 gamer score. Shoot five of them in a single level. Warts and all. 20 gamer score. Die. Fruit Fighter. 35 gamer score. Shoot a background UFO in future tense. So, getting carried away. 35 gamer score. Discover the secret exit in Dino Might. Keep crash under. Keeping crash under wraps. 35 gamer score. Die. UFO Zing. 35 gamer score. Discover the secret exit in Road Crash. And your moment of zen. Somebody's been watching The Daily Show with Trevor Noah for that one. And here it is, your moment of zen. 35 gamer score. Avoid whatever he's flinging at you. And that is that for this week's edition of the Trophy Achievement Podcast. If you enjoyed what you saw, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptized into following the channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the latter day scenes notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. Uh, yesterday's Tarzan on the left. Podcast playlist on the right. I'll see you tomorrow for Tom and Jerry's sins. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out. And stay faithful.